It's lunchtime, and this is Brad Anderson's lunch break. I get invited to attend tech events all the time in Las Vegas. And whenever I can, I like to make the quick trip from Redmond and meet with other tech leaders and learn about what they're doing. Today I'm meeting up with Mary Jo Foley, award-winning tech journalist and editor at ZDNet, and a bona fide Microsoft expert. Like any great journalist, you know, you are world class in, in, in collecting information. Okay? Now there's some urban legends at Microsoft about, you know, ways that you've got or received information in the past. And so I'm gonna ask you a question. You can say true, false, no comment. Okay. One rumor is that you know you used to ride around on the buses that go around campus and just listen to conversations. True. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Until Microsoft found out I was doing this. I, they posted my picture in the shuttle station. Uh, <laughs> I heard. They said, if you see this woman, do not let her on the shuttle. <laughs> she does not work for the company. So I, I stopped doing that. Although, I'll say, the last time I was at Microsoft, they are not requiring us to show badges anymore on the shuttle. Yeah, so yeah. maybe right. maybe I wrote it. Urban, urban legend. Oh, wow. <laughs> urban legend number one, true. And, and, and note to self, look out for, for, for Mary <laughs> Foley. Okay, urban legend number two. Have you ever worked in the cafeteria dressed up as somebody, uh, <laughs> as a cafeteria worker? And you know, I've heard this one too, and I can say that is false. Okay, all right. <laughs> one of the ones I've heard the most is, is, is you had people that would sit at the pro club in Redmond and listen to conversations. Not true. Did you dress up like a bridesmaid for Steve Ballmer's wedding and crash the wedding? No, no, not <laughs> I true. I totally made that one up. Not true. <laughs> it's not unprecedented that this could happen. I, although I did not do that. So today when you're talking to customers and customers are inquiring into you, you know, I'm sure you get a lot of inquiries in saying, about, hey, what's Microsoft doing here and yes. that? Like, what's the number one question you're getting right now about Microsoft? Um, I get a lot of questions about how how committed is Microsoft to, to customers who aren't ready to go 100% cloud? Mm. Uh, you know, because there are a lot of fears, I think, because you guys are being so um, out there on. with the sure. cloud stuff, they're like, oh man, you know, I want to put some of my workloads in the cloud, but I'm not ready to put them all. Are they going to keep supporting SharePoint and SQL Server on-prem and even Windows Server? Like I have people saying, is Windows Server 2016 the last version? Um, so yeah. I think people are worried about that. Good advice. First, to make sure that, that, that we're even pushing our hybrid store even more right. on that. Because, right. you know, the, I'll tell you, the work to do Azure stack was non-trivial. That, mm -hmm. that was an engineering feat to take yeah. some aspects of Azure and have that be able to run on Windows Server so you have that consistent cloud platform. Right. You started your, your career in 1983 at an electronic business? business. The electronic wow. business magazine. Yep, you're okay. right. 1983, what was the hot technology that you were covering? So my very first bylined article was about beryllium copper wire. <laughs> And so how do you make beryllium copper wire <laughs> intriguing? It was a challenge, but luckily I got off the capacitor and component beat after that because I went to my boss and I said, you know, I, I think there's a new whole developing category we're not covering, software. And he said to me, software, it's a fad. Oh. And um, I'm, I said, let me try to make it interesting. And yeah, and then the rest is history. Right. What's one of the predictions that you had that you would have said, you know, say 15 years ago, that you know has come true and what's a prediction that you kind of like oh, Microsoft missed an opportunity there 15 years ago I always thought Microsoft would be forever the Windows company and I really oh, yeah I really couldn't foresee a day when Microsoft would not have that as its priority number one and I feel like these days Microsoft's priority one is the cloud and Windows is still definitely a big business for the company but it's not the top priority. 15 years ago, if you had told me Microsoft was going to have Office on, on any Apple product, I mean, you had you had the original Mac product, but sure. anything beyond that, yeah. or Microsoft doing open sourcing so much of its software, I would never have believed it. What's been the most surprising of all those moves? What surprised you most? Mm -hmm. I, this may sound crazy, but when you guys announced you were doing SQL Server on Linux, I at first thought that was a joke. I'm like, what day is this? This is April Fool's. Yeah, yeah. And so many people were pinging me saying, wait, are you like kidding? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, because I, I wasn't that surprised that you open source some of the developer tools, sure. but the SQL Server on Linux, it just, it just was kind of out of left field. And so many of the customers that I was talking to at the time were very excited about it. You mentioned the three CEOs. This is a fundamentally different company than we were three years ago when Satya took over. Tell me what, in your view, Satya has done that has changed the company so dramatically. So 
it's really interesting. I, I interviewed Satya for many years before he became the CEO. I always remember being impressed by him that it, that he was a person, when you interviewed him, he actually listened to the question and answered it. Because so many people have pat answers. And, yeah, they're deflecting. Right, and I, I was just stunned. Like, I, I asked the guy something and he answered it. And when I got to interview him um, last year as CEO, he's just the same guy. And I think he's brought that humility and tech interest to the CEO job and it's really boosted morale at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I felt like morale was kind of on a downswing. Like everybody you talked to were like, yeah, we're doing this, but eh, it's never gonna work. And now people are really jazzed about what they're doing oh, yeah. again and it makes it really fun as the reporter to cover it. Good perspective, I'll tell you from an internal perspective, there is more energy inside of Microsoft in the 14 years that I've been here than there ever has been. Mm -hmm. So you've had a front row seat at some major parts of history in terms of our industry. Mm -hmm. Like you were at Convex in 1984. I was. And I heard that's the first time you met Steve Jobs. I was interviewing Bill Gates. That was the very first time I interviewed Gates, actually. And I was a brand new, wet behind the ears tech reporter. And I was interviewing Gates at Comdex on the show floor. And Steve Jobs walked up and Bill started talking to Steve in the middle of my interview. Okay. So I didn't know who he was. <laughs> And so I asked him to leave. I said, you asked, you asked I'm Steve like, Jobs to leave. I'm like, hey, um, I'm interviewing this guy. Could you come back later? <laughs> and and then he's like, sure. And he like sauntered off and Gates looks at me and he's like, do you know who that was? I'm like, no. And he said, that's Steve Jobs. And I'm like, no. And he's like, you don't know who that is, do you? I'm like, nope. <laughs> One last question okay. here. Tell me something about Paul Farrat the world doesn't know. <laughs> Ooh, man, something the world doesn't know. Now, who's this character right here? Hey, speak of the devil. And Elvis. Oh, Mary Jo. Brad. Thank you. Thanks, it was fun. Yeah, I'm gonna do this again. Great. Seriously. Good. When I come to New York, I'll let you know. All right. All right. Hey, stay, what are you doing out here? Stay off the buses. There's no party of yours like that, Brad. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs>